Uh, the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Chairman, I'm really pleased to be able to take a call or two in the committee stage of the Conservation Natural Heritage Protection Bill. And can I begin by commending the member in whose um, name the bill stands before the House, um, Jackie Dean, um, and say that it's a very good bill. Um, I appreciate the way that she engaged with the Select Committee. Um, and I particularly appreciate the fact that she acknowledged um, my colleague Marianne Street for her work. I think that's a very, good, um, a very good attitude and a very good basis on which to progress it. And Labor certainly will be giving its support to the bill. Um, it does things that are sensible. Um, it was substantially improved, even though it was a good bill to start with. It was made even better at the Select Committee process, and I think that is a tribute also to all the Select Committee members um, yes, perhaps we could quit now. Peace seems to have broken out, as my colleagues, <laughs> colleagues say. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm enjoying it, because it is a good bill, and the Select Committee good, did, uh, did good work as well. So, um, as I say, it's a pleasure to support this bill. I, I, I wonder if it went through the mind of the member or the mind of the leaders of the House uh, uh, Honourable Jerry Brownlee and, uh, and Tolly and Stephen Joyce when this was due to come up on this particular night. Well, I, I'm sure that they would have seen the title of it and thought conservation. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think we've had enough discussion about conservation in the House in the last little while because, of course, the Minister of Conservation, the Honourable Nick oh, Smith, oh. has been figuring quite highly Order. in the last two weeks as a result of um, his inconsistent representations to the House and to the Order. public. So it's, it's good that this bill, even though it deals with the Minister of Conservation's um, legislation, it's good that this bill is going to be so well supported and that comments that made about it are going to be consistent rather than highly questionable. The member, Jackie Dean, went through the details of the bill in uh, quite some detail, and I think that if you go from the starting point of the fact that this is a members' bill rather than a government bill, and look at you know what what the what the member Jackie Dean saw to do, I think it's a really sensible place to start because the penalties regime um, was clearly outdated, it was clearly inconsistent, and this bill brings it um, in, into a much more realistic state where the penalties that are imposed on people um, will serve the purpose. They'll give them a wake-up call. They'll make them pay the price for any damage um, that they've done either, you know, well, we can go into the details of what they might do later, but any of the penalties that are incurred, they now have a penalty that is relevant, considered by this Parliament, relevant to the damage that has been done, and I think that's a very good thing. Um, Marion Street uh, at the Select Committee um, proposed that a new Part 6 was to be added to the penalty regime so that the Marine Mammal, Mammals Protection Act 1978 was also updated in the same way as the other pieces of legislation. And as Jackie Deans noted, that was a move that was um, innovative. So I think um, Honourable Marion Street should be congratulated for that forethought, but also for the Select Committee um, for supporting it. There is a frustration that's often held, um, that's often shared in this Parliament about the framing of the conservation debate, and I think it's one that's worthy of mention at the moment, given that this is the topic before us, um, and it's certainly topical in a number of other areas where, there has, where the current government have, have seen conservation and environment, actually, as being something that needs to be balanced off mm. against proposals, against things that might give us economic gain. And in my view, that's not the appropriate way to view um, environment, conservation and the economy. Because if you lose some of the value of the conservation estate, it's gone forever. And the overall value to the co economy of our conservation estate is very high. New Zealand has a lot of things to offer, um, but our biggest attraction is our natural environment. People come to New Zealand because of that. They enjoy it. They go back and tell other people about it. It's something that many other countries envy. And we enjoy so much in New Zealand because of the land, the environment that we have around us. And it's often uh, things that can be enjoyed for no cost, which again is something that other countries are very envious of. So we need to do our best to always offer protection. So if you start 
your frame of thinking with, well, we've got some conservation, Mr Chairman, we've got some conservation values here, but we've got some potential economic gain here, and those need to be balanced off, then I think you're like, likely to get the wrong answer. Um, in my view, you need to say that, that there are some things that are so precious that it's our responsibility, whether in law or just from a moral standpoint, it's our responsibility to protect those values and those um, precious parts of our country, whether it's the water, whether it's the land, or whether it's other landscapes and fauna and flora. So that's the frame that I think we need to bring to the conservation debate. This bill actually contributes in many ways because it comes from the starting point of saying people who, who um, break the law, people who do damage, um, should actually have a penalty attached to that action which reflects the upset that New Zealand society feels at their action. And the previous penalties were wildly out of date. Uh, and also inconsistent, depending on what action was taken, but also where it was taken. So that didn't give a strong message about the value of the conservation estate in the same way as the National Party's framing of the, um, you know, balance it up, conservation versus economic development, sends the wrong message to the public of New Zealand. The, the message that we should be giving is that we are the guardians of our land and of our sea. We are responsible for what future generations will have to enjoy, and that is a responsibility that we should take uh, very seriously. Mr Chairman, I just want to conclude by also noting the fantastic work the, that the officials did on the committee. Um, the, it's, it's often, I think, a pretty frustrating task um, to be an official who's dedicated to the work that they're doing. They're, you know, in the main, and I've seen very few exceptions to this, high-quality public servants. Yeah, they, I yeah. thought they should be sitting down here. Yeah. There's some really nice green seats down the back that officials um, sometimes are able to use. Um, but th these particular officials are shy and they're getting more embarrassed by the minute as they're clearly in the range. We can't refer to where they are, of course, because that's against standing orders, but um, they're certainly within earshot of this. But on this bill, I want to commend the quality of work from the officials. I know that officials often can get frustrated by what they see as game playing with important pieces of legislation that they might have worked very hard on. This bill would have come as a surprise to them because it was a member's bill, not a government bill. And I think the thought that they gave to it and the contribution that they made really allowed quite, as I said earlier, quite substantial submit, um, <coughs> changes to be made at, uh, during the select committee process unanimously agreed and which will now be progressed through the committee. I know that the, the Department of Conservation officials particularly have had a really hard time in the last little while. Their funding has been cut back over the last four years. They have wow. had big restructuring and for the staff that are there, these have been uh, you know, pretty stressful and trying times. The most recent incident where there have been uh, where there's been a whistleblower who has raised the Order. raised the issue of the, the raised the issue of the submission from the Department of Conservation on the Ruatinifa Dam. Uh, of course, there'll be further uncertainty within the department. So, for those officials to come to the Select Committee looking at this bill and supporting us in the ways not not just a commendation to their professionalism, but also a recognition of what else is happening in their lives. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, with those um, highly relevant. Um, comments. I want to again commend the member for her vision in introducing this bill and thank the Select Committee for their substantive work on it. Mr Chairman. Um, I'm calling Mr. Chair. Nikki Wagner. Thank you very much, Mr Chair.